Derek, we're going to fix it in post. We're fix gonna... it all in post. Fix it in post. In case uh, you guys were curious, and we know you're not, we've had some technical difficulties leading up to this. So we're using, I think, the most basic recording system of all time. Um, voice memo. <laughs> what, what is it? <laughs> it's called voice memo. Voice memo. This is very sophisticated stuff, folks. <laughs> we need you to to just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sultry sounds of voice memo, um, which yeah. I'm sure is probably way better than GarageBand, right? Well, and uh, you know, you can help us out by donating to our Patreon. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, you know what voice memo is? It's probably like Microsoft Paint is to Adobe Photoshop. Oh, Microsoft Paint was great. Yeah, we all love Microsoft Paint, uh, right? So, so yeah. this should be like that when we all colored in different shapes and squares and you know hey it saved our butt tonight so give it, give it up for voice memo way to go voice memo <laughs> there's probably like one person on the apple team working on that product so he's like <laughs> fuck yes someone recognized me <laughs> these guys are great they finally recognize my work well well uh, Stu, this is weird because because we're talking together and what are we doing right now well you know to be honest i I didn't recognize you when I first saw you this afternoon because I don't think we've done a podcast in roughly a, a year, a year, it's a year, been a year, dude, maybe less. I don't know. But, you know, pandemics hit, hit everyone in different ways. Derek and I just stopped seeing each other. Yeah. It wasn't a breakup. It was just a separation. Yeah. Uh, but here we are, Derek. And actually, this time we're on location. So we're at North Fifth Brewing. That was enough of a buildup, I feel like. We were talking yeah. about it for like five minutes. We were, yeah. Like, we're, okay, fuck. We're at North Fifth Brewing, which is very exciting <laughs> because this is actually one of Vegas' newest breweries, launched in December 2021, um, already on the scene, already being distributed at several places around town. They're, they're at some BJ's locations. Uh, they're at a few, you know, they're, they're making their way and they're not even, they haven't even been around for a year. So, Derek, before we get into all this, should, should we let it roll? Oh my God, let's let it roll. Let's let it roll for the first time in 12 months. Woo! Five, four, three, two, one, go. Hi, my name is Stu Hawk, and this is my podcast about all the weird, crazy, spooky things that scare me and my guests, and the one thing that helps us forget all about them. Ladies and gentlemen, Beer Freaks. We are back with Patrick Head Brewer from North Fifth Brewing. Patrick, welcome. How's it going, guys? Thank you for having me on the podcast. Thanks Thank for, you, man. Thanks for, thanks for letting us come up here, see the place, yeah, enjoy absolutely. some beers. I've already had multiple, so <laughs> as have I. They're fantastic, dude. I, they I'm, oh, I can't even talk about it yet. Man. It's too early in the podcast. Don't talk, I about, talk about it. <laughs> I don't even know what we're drinking. The what are first they? rule of beer freaks. You don't talk about the beer. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, we do. That's all we do. That's, that's all we, we talk about the beer. But we don't talk about it yet. We no. talk about who we've got on first. So, Patrick, thank you for, for joining us, man. Um, you know, I know you've got a long history of uh, brewing in this town. Um, Love for you to just give us a little bit of a rundown on like what you've what you've been working on. Yeah. Yeah. I got my start over at uh, Banger Brewing uh, in downtown Las Vegas. Um, was over there for about five, six years. Um, I started actually at the door. Mm. <laughs> I was oh, right on. checking IDs and letting people in and <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> no worked my, truly worked my way up. I, I kind of made friends with the owners there back when I was a home brewer and when nice. a job opened up, they're like, eh, like, if you don't mind working the door for a while, eventually something's going to open up in the brewery and it'll be a chance for you to learn. Um, oh, yeah. and yeah, just kind of built from there and. Assistant brewer there for a while, eventually got to be the head brewer. Um, and then, yeah, four or five years in, North Fifth approached me, Matt and Amanda, um, yep. and showed me kind of what they had going on over here. And I was ready to make the jump and been here for about 14 months. Our one year anniversary is in December. So, wow. hell yeah. That's hell nuts. yes. Yeah. Just in time for Christmas. Yes. Celebrate the one year anniversary <laughs> because. December is really the month of the hangover, you know, yeah. in my opinion, oh, you've got all the great beers coming out, you know, it's a lot of fun. So, I mean, North Fifth, this is a whole different side of town. I mean, I think everyone yeah. who loves beer in Vegas, probably very familiar with the booze district down in Henderson, familiar with the arts district that's up and coming, the beer street, 
Brewery um, Row. Is it Brewery Row? That's what yep. it's called. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a little bit further north. You know, it's yeah. it's got a really unique location. So why did you guys select this location? So Matt and Amanda, um, the owners here, they they actually were running a restoration business um, that they took over for their dads. So they've been working out of this particular location, which we're in a like a warehouse industrial location in North mm-hmm. Las Vegas. Um, they were out of here for about 20, 25 years. Wow. Uh, and then a couple years after they took it over, they said, you know what would be more fun than fixing houses that have <laughs> flooded or been lit on fire is making beer. So they took the time. It took three years from when they made that decision to open up. Um, and they already had the building. We have a, a warehouse and they converted their office space into a tap room. Um, very, like you said, very similar to like the, the booze district where, you know, craft house and, yeah. um, astronomy and bad beater, all those are in like the warehouse district with the tap room. And, mm. um, so yeah, they kind of craft house kind of, I feel like set that model for everyone in Vegas. Uh, and we've all kind of lashed onto it and we're the first ones to do it in North Las Vegas. So we're hoping like in Henderson, more people will follow out sure. here and we'll kind of build a little bit of a brewery scene out here too. So absolutely. And, you know, obviously Vegas is spread out, right? And and North Vegas is really growing from, mm-hmm. from what I understand. So this could easily be the first of many and hopefully the flagship of, of what's to come. Now, I got to ask you, though. So you said you were working the door at Banger. Yes. Did you ever have to deal with any rowdy guests? No, everyone's very well behaved on Fremont. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I was, smell bullshit on yeah, that one. <laughs> that was... This, I probably blocked many of those out of my head, <laughs> but yeah, there was some, there's some crazy stuff. As you can imagine, we were on literally Fremont street and Las Vegas Boulevard. Jeez. Yeah. So it's, yeah. you know, <laughs> working the door on Halloween down there is oh, a night I'll never forget. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, people come in really messed up. Yeah. Coming to your brewery and oh, you got a. Uh, I want a shot of Jameson or do you got Miller Lite? And they don't even know they're oh, at geez. a brewery. Like, and, dude, dude, um, <laughs> you don't know where you are, do you? I lo- Speaking of that, dude, I love a little tangent here. I love those guys that go into these like tap houses and stuff. And they have these amazing beers on tap, and they're like, "Hey, I'll take a Pat. <laughs> who's or I'll who's take doing a Miller Lite? Who's, who's doing that? Give moon. me a Schlitz. Like, what are you doing, dude?" <laughs> That was, that was actually well, Derek four years ago. He was pulling yeah, that kind of yeah, shit. kind of loser? Uh, we, we literally, at Banger, we literally made a beer that we called Beer Shot. We just made a 15% strong as possible beer. We didn't carbonate it. We served Ooh. it as a little two-ounce shot for the people that would come in that were like, hey, do you got a shot of something? We're like, yeah. No shit. Did that, diffuse, did that smart. diffuse the situation? Yeah. So the easiest way to be like, yeah, we got this. And then we got some beer on tap. Boom. And that's so we, super smart. You know, we adapted. And then it, since I've left, they've, they've done a good job. Like they have some cocktails now and it's kind of, they've kind of merged into like fitting that crowd a little better, but they still yeah. have, you know, really solid beer out there as well. So, oh yeah, yeah very, <laughs> You, I mean, part of the fun down there is just sitting on the patio and people watching. Oh, for <laughs> that's sure. That's part of that. For sure. Ba- Banger's great, man. I, I love that place. But I got to tell you right now, I, what I'm sipping on, and I'm not going to talk about it yet, but it, it is very good. And Thank you. I'm, I'm excited for the work that you guys are doing. But just so you know, if you visit North 5th, you're dealing with a guy who has dealt with people on Halloween on Fremont and Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, don't mess so with this guy. Don't That's fuck around when you come up to North 5th. <laughs> he seems like a big teddy bear, but I could see him kicking some butt. Oh, there's a yeah. dark side. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to mess around tonight. No, I wouldn't either. Dude. All right. So, so right now... We are we're, we're sitting in a this tap room. Well, it's not a tap; it's a brewery. Um, has several beers on draft, right? Yes. And again, you guys are less than a year old, but you've got to have a favorite by now. I'm actually probably drinking it right now. I'm drinking our uh, our German Pilsner Zicky Zacky. Zicky Zacky. Z- that's got to that's got to yeah. have a good story where's behind the, it. Yeah, where's the name? So from? that it literally is just I think it just means to, uh, to toast in German. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, okay not as good of a story. Yeah, so, yeah. Not, not a good yeah. story. I mean, no. <laughs> okay, let's, just, let's, re- let's rewind. Okay, yeah. let's make a good story. Let's cut that part out. <laughs> no, it, yeah, so that's our beer that we did uh, f- about five, six months ago um, and sold out like crazy. And we were like, oh, we got to do that one again. And yeah. now it's probably going to end up being a more regular in rotation beer. But I love a good light. A light lager, yeah. especially um, summertime in yes. Vegas. Yeah, and yeah. it's a nice five point one percent German Ooh, style pilsner. Nice, a little dude. bit of hop okay. character, a little spicy bitter finish, but nothing too crazy. Ooh. Very, very crushable. 
Now, is this is this one that's always on rotation? Do you guys have certain ones always on rotation? So we have two that are pretty much always on, on rotation: uh, Fiero um, and Florida Mile, which have well, actual better stories behind them. <laughs> nice. Um, Did you say flurry? Florida Mile. Oh, I thought, a, I thought there was a flurry. <laughs> we, we do bro. have a white cloud though. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, rock on. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Um, but yeah, so Fiero is our Mexican lager. Um, so that's actually named. So we're very family oriented brewery we're family owned family operated okay uh, matt and amanda are brother and sister they're the owners of the brewery yeah um I, my brother actually works here as well so i'm the head brewer he's the assistant brewer and the bar manager oh right on um so it's very family oriented um and they wanted to name this beer fiera mexican lager after someone in their family which mm. fiero is their grandmother's hometown oh right um, on. out in uh uh new mexico okay um so they wanted to kind of keep that Family roots, um, five, and then Florida Mayo is named after the street we're on, Mayflower. Um, nice. so we're not technically on North Fifth, so Mayflower is our street that we're on. That's our West Coast IPA. So okay. you guys lied about your we did. name, yeah. Oh, Jesus, that, uh, you know what? That's marketing, folks. So don't <laughs> hold it against them. That's all. No, no, that's actually it, <laughs> North Fifth has a yeah. cool name. North yeah. is cool. North Fifth is well, awesome. and they named it that because they wanted. To Again, history being the first brewery in North Las Vegas, they North Fist, the longest running street in North is it, Las is Vegas. Is it the first uh, North Las Vegas yeah. brewery? Wow. Yeah, I thought when That's they told me, I was like, cool. ah, I thought Big Dog, but Big Dogs, I guess, is technically not North, North Las it's Vegas. It's West, so it's probably yeah. more just Vegas, right? Yeah. So wow. we're, yeah, first official brewery in North Las Vegas. So That's they wanted to have something cool. that tied it That's to cool. the city. Uh, and North, La- yeah, North Fist, longest running street in North Las Vegas. So they're sick. And it's pretty close to here. So they got to figure out we can get away with it. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. I, I think you totally get away That's awesome, man. Yep. Okay. So, so one of the things that you showed us before the show started um, was just how much space you guys have in the back. Yeah. I mean, you guys are prepared to grow. Like, what do you guys want to get to? Like, where would you like to be distributed if you had, if you had your druthers? Right. I mean, honestly, I, I view a brewery like New Glarus um, in Wisconsin, if you yeah. guys know anything about New Glarus, they only distribute in Wisconsin. That's the one that is Spotted Cow, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's the one. I, I got a bunch of friends in Chicago. They literally drive to Wisconsin right. to go get Spotted Cow. Mm-hmm. And it's a great lager. It's Don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's not like world ending like, oh, I got to cross state lines. But the fact that they just distribute in Wisconsin kind of gives it like it. a little bit of mystique. It makes you, I don't know, there's an attachment to it. Yeah. And I feel like. I kind of want us, I, what I see for us is hopefully, you know, and I'm sure many breweries in town have the goal is to like be that brewery that you associate with Las Vegas or Nevada. Yes. Um, and I think a lot of breweries push out in other states right away and try and do all that. And I feel like you look at New Glarus and they're like something like the 15th biggest craft brewery in the country and they only really? distribute in Wisconsin. Wow. Um, so, and I, and I think they're a great model for any brewery that's trying to grow. And, and we have so much room for growth in vegas you know like so many breweries are opening now which is awesome but it's still compared to so many other cities it's we have so much room to make up you know like i know you have a san diego background and you go to san diego and it's yeah it's it's, i remember being at i think we were at uh you can't walk down the street in san diego without running into a brewery yeah we were at uh alesmith and yeah, we asked Ailsmith's the bartender, great. like, oh, like, what's a cool brewery on here? He's like, well, there's like 18 within a mile. <laughs> so, and it's like, oh, that's how many are in Vegas. <laughs> the yeah, entire city, the entire you know? thing. Yeah. No, that's I mean, so I mean, the other thing like about New Glarus is obviously they've created this kind of cult following when it comes to IPAs mm-hmm. like Pliny the Elder. Right. Like oh, yeah. that's that's sort of like the model, like because they were one of the original IPAs, maybe yeah. not the original, but close to it. But they they don't really distribute. And that's why people like literally make pilgrimages to Northern California, right. Russian River Brewing to get Pliny the Elder, right? Yeah. There's like that fine line between we want our beer to be available to a lot of people, but we also don't want it to be too available because yeah. it can lose that mystique. And it's, you never quite know where that line is and what's the right. right. So everyone, and it, especially today, everyone wants your newest release. What's your new, that's the first thing people ask when they come into the bar. Most of the time is what's your newest beer. Oh, so, I, yeah. I ask what's your favorite beer. That's a good one. I mean, that that's is like a good that. one. I ask but, what but your weirdest beer is. You do. I you love know that. what? That's a good one You're too. wearing a Mojave Brewing shirt yeah. right now. Yeah. Which, oh, um, their pepper beer. Man. That, <laughs> I, I still remember pepper walking beer. into the bar with you, and that was like the first thing you said. Shotgun like, what's wedding. your weirdest? And you got shotgun wedding. Yeah, they do some fun stuff. They do like yeah. some beers with cereal in them. <laughs> their, their cream ale. I knew they do a bunch of cool stuff with their cream ale. Yeah. 
Every yeah. brewery has their like their their one. You know what I mean? That's at so least one. good. Yeah, at least at one. least one. Some have more. Yep. But yeah, I mean, so I don't know. I feel like this show has kind of turned you on to IPAs a little bit more. I know you're still not an IPA fan. No, hundred percent. Like I, I'm, I'm a really big fan of hazies. I yeah, still can't hazies. go. I still can't go full skunk. You know, we should we should <laughs> get him a West Coast before he leaves. I can't do that, dude. Just to. It's it's actually a pretty mellow West Coast. I would yeah, okay. say it's actually one of my favorite things is seeing someone who doesn't like IPAs and they insist I don't like them and you yeah. make them try them and then make they make face like oh disgusting yeah, yeah I yeah. do love that oh it's great <laughs> so it's great I remember the first time my wife tried an IPA she said it tasted like grass which you know it sounds about to right. an extent she's not sometimes wrong sometimes they do yeah, yeah. I I'm mean, not like, a bunny a bunny <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said mummy I was like what no, the fuck bunny. does that have to do with it <laughs> Wait, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> you know not even mummies a... love grass yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> out in the desert yeah yeah no it's good. Speaking of mummies, Derek. Speaking of mummies. <laughs> All right. So we've got a couple of things that we want to get to. But first, yes. well, we want to get to the beer. Because, I mean, the beer, we that's, get that's to the why beer. I'm in this business. But, God, but yeah, we but do got to start with do. the fear. We got to start with the fear. We got to get a little tease from you, Patrick. So don't tell us the fear. But... But try and, t- you know what I mean? Like, tease us a little. I will, all I'll say is that a couple of beers can cure my fear. Ooh. Well, but, but this, okay, so just so you know, the tagline of the show is all of the things that keep us up at night and the one thing that helps us forget all about them. So Safe. beer f- cures everything. Yeah. Right? So you've kept it very broad. I love it. I love it. But, but you know what? That's fine. Yeah. Because it keeps the audience engaged. All three of you are going to be waiting on pins and needles. Mom, just dad, sat- Stu's mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my aunt. <laughs> a couple of cousins. Let's Thanks for tuning in. My wife will probably listen to this one. So it'll be great. Yeah, there's a new one. It'll be great. Let's do. I gotta say, I think we should take a commercial break. My, my tummy's hurting a little bit. Yeah, you get a little old Pepto problem. Yep. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, listen to some Pepto. Let's talk about the fact that Pepto Bismol made a song about all of the things that we hate. Uh, that's bold. Almost as bold as a beautiful, wonderful IPA pouring into a perfectly clean pint glass that we all just love and enjoy. Uh, Pepto-Bismol. They don't sponsor the show, but one day they will. Pepto-Bismol. Sponsoring the show since 2023. All right. So all you guys tried this already, but I'm going to, I, I, I want to give my honest opinion on this. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? You taking it? Oh, are we doing it? Whoa. Are we recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. Dude, disgusting. that's no. You know what? That's <laughs> actually really, really. That's an IPA. Yeah, but like we didn't, we didn't even segue into this. Though, did we? Well, no, no, no. We're <laughs> going to. I just wanted to get my actual oh. live opinion on oh. recorded. Good. That's it. Um, that's wild that this is an. There's no way this is an IPA. I told that's you, crazy. it's a, it's, an IPA. it's not. It's not as hoppy, right? Like, no. Yeah, it's got well, a little bit of it in there that I can taste, but hoppy it's not. is kind of a general term because there's technically more hops in a hazy. Than there are in the West Coast usually, depend uh, depending. But Whoa. I mean, in our hazies, we use probably twenty to thirty percent more hops in our hazies. Holy cow! But they're less bitter. It's all about when you add it and all that. So, um, so, so, so th- is that the only difference? Is when you're adding the hops? That's a a big part of it. What what type of hops you're using? What part of the brewing process you're adding them in? Um, you know, the lo- the earlier you add your hops in during the boil. Basically, the more bitter your beer is going to be. Okay. The more hops you add early in the boil. Um, so hazy IPAs, some some breweries don't even add hops into their boil kettle at all. It's strictly dry hopped in the fermenter. Dry hopped. Um, or they add it in the whirlpool, which is after the boil. Okay. Um, West Coast IPAs are more heavy on boil additions, but also super dry hopped. Mm. So it's kind of a melding of both. Um, but yeah, it's all, it's all about when you add them. Um, mm. The West Coast... Has that bitterness that some people don't like, that piney characteristic, citrus, right. grapefruit, you know, whatever it might be, floral. Um, one of our big things here is just like we want every beer to be approachable, sessionable in its own way, um, and crushable. And crushable. Yes. I love that. I want to pause on that word really yeah. fast. It's fantastic. So when I drink this IPA, and by the way, can you tell us the name of this IPA really quickly? Yeah, so this is uh, Flor de Mayo. Uh, and that's our West Coast staple IPA that we have on year round. What's the uh, ABV on this bad boy? Seven percent. 
Seven nice. percent. Okay, so this is this is not a low octane beer. No, this is a good right right down the middle IPA for us. Se- well, yeah, some people <laughs> might call it <laughs> sessionable. Those people should probably think <laughs> think a little good. bit. Uh, but I would call this IPA very crushable because it's smooth. Like it's smooth. Like you know. So so actually, right. I'm glad you said what you said because hoppy is not the right word, mm. right? It's actually bitter. So like this beer is not very bitter, even right. if maybe there's more more or less hop, whatever. So it's not saying how hoppy something is. It's maybe more about how yeah. bitter it is. Um, yeah, and this particular West Coast kind of blurs a line between, you know, like you think of like stone with like a classic, yeah. super bitter, um, piney West Coast. Um, I feel like this is more kind of the modern version of what people want out of a West Coast where it's, it's got some of that bitterness. It's got that hoppy bite to it, but it's also got some fruity, floral, yes. um, juiciness. It's got a li- it's got a little bit of everything to it, yeah. but it still goes down nice and dry and crisp. It goes down crisp, and I and I am getting a little bit of that floral. I'm mm-hmm. getting a little bit of that juicy. Yeah, just you know. just on that little back end, man. And That's, again, my my like IPA fantastic. index at this point is primarily Derek's face when he takes a drink. Yeah, and <laughs> you know he can handle it. So so I think. The Florida, um, sorry, what's the name of this beer again? Flora de Mayo. Flora, Flora de, Mayo. de Mayo. Mayflower in Spanish. <laughs> Flora if de Mayo um, is, in fact, very drinkable for people who maybe don't even love IPAs. Maybe want to try to find a way to get into them, right? No, no, this is amazing. <clears throat> like, yeah. I, I, I could that. crush this thing. I, I mean, honestly, I would say this is, this is a really, really solid IPA. I mean, this Dude. is probably one of the best that I've had in, in recent times. And I will say this, too. Um, I have, in probably the time that we have uh, uh, not done a podcast, it's been a while, uh, I've gone keto, right? Ooh. That is problematic when it comes to beer drinking. That's going to get you drunk. <laughs> this is going to get me drunk. It is. And also... Um, I did have an IPA a couple of weeks ago. So I've been keto for, I don't know, four months now or so. Last time I had an IPA, it tasted almost like gross to me hmm. because like it had been so long since I think I'd had something that heavy and thick. This is like, again, I just go back to your word, crushable. So like this is this is not a light IPA. This is not like, it's a, it's a good flavorful IPA, 7%. And I'm, I'm fucking enjoying it, man. Yeah, thank you. I mean, well like done. I said, that's really is my goal with any beer I make is it can be the, you know, crazy intense stout. It could be the lightest beer we make. It, I just always want it to be, you know, you finish a sip of that beer and right away you're like, oh, I, I want another sip. <laughs> I, I, we definitely are. We want everything to just be like, oh, I want to have another one of these. I want to order three more. I want to have something else like it. That's just kind of what we try and design every recipe as. So absolutely. Anyway, you know what? Off that subject. Let's talk about dun, dun, dun. Patrick's fear. Patrick's fear. Patrick, mm. we've had a little beer, mm-hmm. but we, but you gave us almost nothing with uh, with your fear. <laughs> your I mean, fear. like, so what you said, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like paraphrase here. So like he said, the beer would help him with his fear, which yep. which is kind of bullshit, right? Because like beer helps basically every fear. In yeah, fact, it does. with our Uber driver, sorry, Lyft driver. Yep, Lyft. Yep. On the way up here, <laughs> saw the stratosphere. Wendy. Like, what would it? <laughs> She's gonna be so excited. She's got her name, Wendy. You were a doll. You are uh, now our fourth listener. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking about her fear of heights as we pass by the stratosphere. So we we're like, yeah, you just have a couple of beers, mm-hmm. you know. So beer cures all fears. That's the point of the show. But Patrick, it's time to dive into uh, into your big fear. So drum roll. Brrr. My fear is public speaking. <laughs> oh, which you would never know. And here we are. Yeah. And here we are. Mind you, we're we're in a little closet right now. Uh, so <laughs> with nobody around. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> in Derek's sex dungeon. <laughs> yep. There's a swing right over there. <laughs> we're actually all handcuffed right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually making me more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, we like Jesus. that. Okay, so when was like Tell, tell us about this. Like, when was the first time you realized that public speaking was a challenge? Well, and I feel like that's a very common fear for a lot of people. <laughs> you know, and I feel like you notice it in school when you have to give your presentation or 
whatever it might be. And I know I just every time I'd have to give a presentation in school. You just get like the shakes. Sure. You yeah. Get nerve, like the anticipation of giving the speech. The best part about the shakes too is like, you know, like when you were in like your younger grades and you held a piece of paper. Oh, you right. could see it. You could <laughs> yeah. see it. Well, you know, like well, you could hear it and you could even hear it. Easy. Yes. Well, that's the worst part. And then it feeds into like your fear of like, oh, I'm going to look stupid up there. And then you're shaking and it's like, yeah, you look stupid. You look even worse. <laughs> you look right. Yeah. So you know then, it, you know, it's better to either wing it or memorize it. You got to figure right. out one. Yeah. I just. Anytime I would have a presentation or anytime I have to talk in front of a group of people, this is different because it's just three of us chilling yeah. drinking beer. Uh, but anything beyond like a group of five, six people, if I have to sure. give a presentation or say something, it is the worst. How big is your crew back here? So we, in the brewery, it's perfect. We only have like six employees, <laughs> so we're right just that enough to make you nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so what, that what, what would be the with? threshold for you, like where you'd feel uncomfortable? And it's also different too when it's people I know or we're like it's. Stranger, for sure. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's been a long time. I feel like since I've actually had to give a like a speech or something in mm. front of a. I mean, literally in college, I had a class where I think five or ten percent of the grade was a speech. Oh yeah, and wow. I was like, well, I'm gonna have to do perfect, <laughs> and I don't have to give the speech for everything <laughs> yeah. else. And I, yeah, and I literally nailed the class, and I was like. I don't have to give the speech. See, and I've never been more motivated <laughs> to not to like <laughs> do well in a wow. class. I'm like, I got an A, but I didn't have to do the speech. That's a hell wild, yeah. man. So I, it, it probably isn't as bad as it used to be. I would imagine it's not as bad as it was back yeah. in the day, but it's definitely my biggest fear. Where Where do you think it started? Like, where do you think it stemmed from? <sighs> I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I've never really thought of I've never reflected. On that. You've never <laughs> pondered. I've You've never, never <laughs> stroked your chin yeah, yeah. thinking in a, like a dark room. Like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like it's, it's weird. It's one of those things where you think like, oh, like you imagine all the worst case scenarios in your head. Yeah. Of what can go wrong? Yeah. yeah and yeah. then it never really happens. <laughs> like the worst yeah. thing is like, oh, I look nervous. But for I mean, some reason, it builds up in your head oh, before. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. There, there's no doubt about it. I mean, like literally, I think that there are more people. And this is an old Jerry Seinfeld joke, by the way. I'm not going to make a joke. I'm just saying like what the statistic, like there's more people who are afraid of public speaking than are afraid of dying as a percentage. Right. That's nuts. And so a lot of people have this problem. I think every, like, even if you're not normally, sometimes you are. Yeah, and of course. It just course. depends on your, your mood, your, your perspective in that given situation. But the funny thing is, is like literally what is the worst thing that could happen? Right. Yeah. What, like, no, seriously, Derek, what is the yeah. worst thing that's ever happened to you while public speaking? You forget what you're talking about. You stumble around your words, but that like that's it. I mean, unless you peer pants or something. I mean, well, and it's like who were it's like who actually remembers that? Yeah. Who's just walking around later that day like that fucking guy. That <laughs> fucking guy forgot a couple of words. Yeah. Well, and the losing. thing is, they don't know you forgot freaking words. They don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, that depends on how well you recover. Well, yeah, as well, long yeah. as it yeah. As yeah, someone yeah. who doesn't recover well, yeah. You, they will notice. You gotta own yeah. it. That's so there there is a difference. But yeah. again, worst case scenario is like, ah, oh, that guy's not great at public speaking. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, right. unless you're, well, you're no, flies so down and your dick's out or something like yeah. that, then that kind of sucks. But I don't think that has to do with speaking as much <laughs> as just dressing just yourself. Just do that. That's then. a bigger you problem. go out, <laughs> just have that happen. <laughs> I mean, that's a problem probably before you even got to the stage if, if you have that issue. <laughs> that's an issue. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, but it is funny that so many people have that problem. Yeah, you know? I do wonder why... That is such a common. Well, I, th- I don't. E- I really don't even know. I, I think people are, like majority of people. I feel like care what other people think of them. Yeah. So when they're going up there, they they're like, oh, okay, I don't want to like look stupid to these people because then they'll think I'm stupid and we'll you know this whole right. But right. no one really cares. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no one. And that's no the thing. One no really one cares. cares. Right. Either actually, actually, I think there's two sets of people who are who are listening to you. Either one, like one set of people really care. Yeah. Or the second set of people, um, sorry, the first set of people don't care. The second set of people care, but they're actually rooting for you. Yeah. Like most people right. in the audience, like have you ever gone to a, like a, I don't know, some sort of thing where you can tell it's like not like professional speakers and like usually I'm sitting there in the audience. I'm like, I hope you do well, man. Yeah. Like, like an like, open mic you can night see, or something. Or... Like they're nervous, you yeah. know, they're, they're the mic's shaking in their hand and yeah. they're like, and I'm just like. I hope just do better, man. Do good. I, I like, I I think this percentage of people out there who are like, I hope you suck mm-hmm. is very small. Yeah. Unless you go to a comedy show, you know, like then, sure. then you got the hecklers and the assholes, but like, 
but mostly people either don't care or they want you to do well. Yeah, but that gets it fear in general. It's just, it's so irrational, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So, so when you think about public speaking, like what is the worst thing that could happen? Like that pops into your mind. Dick out. <laughs> it's the dick out. It's the dick out. It's just dick out. No, like I said, I think it's just, you, you just think, oh, I'm going to look stupid. What I'm talking about, they're not going to take me serious or they're going to, they're like, oh, mm. this idiot doesn't know how to talk or, you yeah. know, like it's, a, it's, it's, yeah, it's, stupid <laughs> but it, it it does for whatever reason it's more the build-up too yeah like if it's kind of like in class like if you could be the if you're just the first one to give the speech you don't have the time to get nervous yeah it's almost like the ramp that's up that dude, makes it worse and worse dude yeah. that's the perfect point because that's it. It. i am the guy that when the teacher calls do i have any volunteers i'm the first one right always yeah, so that's bold that's bold. Always. Because, well, for one, I am kind of like, you know, I, I do like it. I like going up there. But, you know. Derek then, just landed then, a commercial. But then I don't. But <laughs> Derek I, just got to. I'm telling you right I now. Did, you you got to talk about this. Yeah. Can you talk about it? But. Can you talk about but it? But let me go back to this. No. Is, no, no. No. Look at. Okay, You're fine. the first one up. You don't have to follow anybody. Like, yeah. You right. are the starting one. But. So it could be but the, the worst reason, thing ever, but it's awesome because you're the right. first up. But the reason that you're comfortable with that. Is because you are outgoing, yeah, yeah, and you're okay with like you probably you you've never been afraid of public speaking in your life. I'm ever. always afraid of it. You always, are. you are always. No, I don't believe yeah. that for a second. Totally, totally. No, I don't believe I, that so, for but a here, second. But here's the weird thing about it is, I I love doing it, but it freaks me out all at the same time. That reminds me, like it's very mm, weird. Adrenaline. It's very weird. I've listened to an interview with Bill Hader from S- like when he was on oh, SNL, I love Bill and, he, and he was like. I would literally have a panic attack every week on the shit. And like, no like shit. I hated going out there, but at the same time, it's what mm. I love doing. So mm. it was like a weird. Wow. Like he, he'll, yeah. If you ever listen to an interview where he talks about his time on SNL, he's like, I couldn't stand it. I was in a terrible place mentally. He would have like literal panic attacks. Jesus. But yeah, <laughs> I had like no a comedic performer that because he's made amazing. it his life to perform in front of people. So it's like Jeez. a weird, even people that do it well, can struggle yeah do you, do you know what's interesting about that too like did you know bill Hader wrote for uh south park mm-hmm. so really? like like and you know south park have you ever seen seven days to air yeah yeah oh totally so fucking good it's yeah crazy it's amazing, amazing. <laughs> i mean like once so you that get it pressure down is that well. on but that's why south park's amazing because they can be so relevant they can be relevant immediately quick. yep immediately so hater must just be an adrenaline junkie right and now he's on Barry, which is also oh, awesome. Dude, he probably feels fantastic. much better about that. You know, a little, a little more relaxing. Yeah. In the uh, that also years. might have been yeah, live audience too is a different than live audience. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But. <clears throat> yep. Okay, so so Derek claims to be afraid of public speaking. <laughs> I think it's bullshit. <laughs> it's fine. He's just trying to make me feel better. I, I think he is. Doing. I think he's trying to he's help trying to you out, which is very nice. <laughs> trying to connect. It's commendable. <laughs> it's commendable. It's very nice of you, Derek, but we don't believe you for a second. Now, can we get back to the fact that you're going to be in a commercial? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Are we allowed to talk about it? No, we totally can. It's for uh, Intermountain Healthcare. Okay. And so I feel it's going to be one of those commercials where it's like, you know, it's a voiceover and then you just see all the, you know, cutesy slow-mo crap happening. In the are just, you the voice or are you the cutesy? No, I'm one of the main roles in it. J- oh, j- wow. Just to preface, like, the, yeah. I'm not bringing this up randomly. I'm just bringing this up as an, like, he likes being on camera. I he's do. good at it. I, I do like it. He's good at, like, ta- so, like, that's what I'm saying. Him telling you that he's afraid <laughs> of public speaking I, I, is bullshit. It's, it's just total bullshit. But it is scary. But I'm just using this as proof. Yeah. But I also enjoy this story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. So this agency I've been with for a few months, um, I maybe got like four things they sent me to audition for. And and this is the first one that came back. And the agency reached out and they're like, hey, they want to see a self-tape. So I sent it in. Um, and then maybe a few hours later, uh, the agency came back and they're like, hey, the client is asking. Would you be okay posing as LGBTQ? I'm like, uh, sure, but what would I be doing? Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I kind of need to how know. How far that. are we talking? Yeah, how far are we talking? And not so that, that there's anything wrong with it. I mean, no, like, no, no, this is, like, but you know, it's my my first gig. Do. I don't want to be, you know, I don't know. Uh, so they ultimately said, oh, you would just be like cooking food in the kitchen, and then a little backyard barbecue with friends. Cool, dude. Let's do it. Yeah. 
So, so I get on set and it's, and it's weird because my, my day job is on the other side of production coordinating. So I coordinate all the shoots, you know, hair, makeup, all that stuff. But now on the commercial, I'm on the other side. So I'm the talent. So they're doing my hair and makeup, all that stuff. <laughs> and so you can yell at them. Yeah, it was tight, right? dude. But, uh, but yeah, long story short, like, you know, I did it and me and this guy, uh, we're, we're in the kitchen and I'm, and I'm stirring the pot of food and I'm like lifting up the spoon to have him taste it, you know, and. And then we're in the backyard, you know, doing a little barbecue. And there's an older guy in it that's, you know, grilling stuff on the on the grill. And then a couple of people in the background. And it's not bad. Uh, and um, but it was funny because my boyfriend in it, you know, yes, he, good he part. his main job, like other than these side gigs, is he is a dancer for Magic Mike. So I'm like. <laughs> So, th- very so to me, I felt very like, I'm like, dang, okay, you booked me to have a guy from Magic Mike be my boyfriend? Dang, okay. I enjoy. That pumps up my confidence right. a little bit. Like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Your dang. first, you know, uh, LGBTQ experience was really top notch, man. I think so. That's solid. I thought that would be a realistic straight. partner for you. Anyway, yeah, so, so fun story. But back to Patrick. <laughs> well, congrats. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it should be out in September. So Sweet. very excited to see it. Yeah. Very excited. It'll be fun. I'm hoping your profile picture changes online. <laughs> I'll, I'll put Ashley the one might have questions. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, it's funny. That's fine. Yeah. So we've 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 uh, we've bled this stone of public speaking. And, you know, admittedly, Derek and I are not uh, psychologists, so. You know, we're not going to try to help you solve You're this not problem. Fix me today. Yeah, we're not going to fix you today. We we we'd love to try oh, yeah. because we're done with the public speaking thing. We suck at public speaking. We yep. all know that. Most humans are bad at it. Yeah, you guys are good at it. Only TED Talks are. You know, well, those no, are the people not that are... I, no. Derek might be good at it. No. We're look. You're in commercials. I don't want to hear <laughs> where I don't say anything. <laughs> well, you know, again, the tagline of this show is. All of the things that keep us up at night and the one thing that helps us forget all about them. So yep. Derek and I, instead of, recall, you know, leaning into modern psychology or the advances in medicine or anything like that, what's really important, if you're scared of something, just drink a beer. Yeah. Just drink a beer, man. We, I mean, just we, relax. We dabble in uh, West Coast style, New England style uh, medicine. So, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're all over the coast. We're all over the coast. We got this figured out. <laughs> Look, you could spend thousands of dollars on psychotherapy. <laughs> you could spend twelve bucks on a six pack. Yeah, I mean, Boom. come on. But and okay. I say twelve bucks because I'm talking about a good six pack. Okay? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But Patrick, we're here with another beer. Correct. And uh, you have to tell us about this sucker, man, because for one, the color looks amazing. I haven't tried it yet. So so this is a little beer we call Yippie Pie Yay for any diehard fans out there. I love it. So this is a mixed berry pie sour. Um, so we've got blackberry, raspberry, and strawberry, and then some vanilla and cinnamon. Uh, that cinnamon gives you a nice little kind of pie crust flavor. Vanilla gives you a little sweetness. And then you get the mixed berry. Um, so this is a nice tart, kind of pie-flavored sour. This is our very first sour we've ever done at North Fifth. We did it in collaboration with Silver Stamp, uh, which is one of my favorite bars in town. Um, Relatively new bar. Yeah, they opened, I think they just had their one-year anniversary, actually, pretty recently. Oh, right um, on. So they came down here, helped us brew this, came up with the idea with us. Oh my um, God. They had it on tap for a little bit at their spot as well. Um, yeah, just nice and tart, kind of unique with a little cinnamon finish to it that gives you like a little warmth as you finish it. Um, but yeah. Well, che- why don't we do a yeah. little cheers before we take a little sip here? Cheers. cheers. Not because I feel like this looks like Got the you. blood of a virgin, but um, <laughs> wow, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, it actually looks very appetizing. Dude. So, okay. So Tums, I won't need it for this guy. This is amazing. Again. Like, you took, is, did you take a sip before I, the cheers? I did. Yeah. But you guys already drank. Hey, <laughs> okay, but the, we have the illusion yeah. of, no one knew that. of podcasting here. Oh my god, I did. I'm sorry. Crap. Did you guys wow. want to take one, Derek? Uh, hey, don't edit sorry, this out. I totally I'm not going to let you edit this out. You know what up. I'm going to do is over the next like the final 20 minutes of the show, 
I'm going to keep saying don't edit out the portion where Derek admits to drink the first. <laughs> it would be uneditable. That I'm way you can't more. edit it out. Um, but seriously, no, this is crazy. It's really good. This is not. Guys, this is not. Tastes like, like a pie. When I see sour, I automatically think like this crazy bite that happens at the end. This is fantastic. Everything really is balanced good. so well. You know, you're totally right about the cinnamon in the back of it. You know, yeah, and then yeah, and then you got like a little, yeah, kind of supposed to mimic that pie crust flavor, but yeah, it's it's crazy. Like with the cinnamon, it does come through at the end, mm-hmm. and I don't know how you did that. Uh, some sort of wizardry yeah. of, That's of what magic. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Jesus, you, know. um, you watch Harry Potter enough, maybe you picked up a few things. I don't know, but like, but yeah, you get you get all the fruit flavors, which are really incredible. Yeah, um, I almost get kind of like a. I think it's a blend of everything. You get like a rhubarb, almost like, like a tart sort of. 100%. Yeah. And, uh, but then the, the cinnamon comes through in the end. Yeah. And it's truly like you get that pie crust in mm-hmm. that, like, the final taste. So you don't have to reveal any secrets here. But like, <laughs> what gave you the inspiration for this? So this is actually, so I mentioned, I think earlier, um, me and my brother have been brewing together for a while. And he's one of our brewers here as well. Um, and this is a sour that we've been wanting to do like a pie sour. For whatever reason, that just stuck in our head um we i'm sure we probably had a sour from some other brewery that kind of had similar flavors and we're like oh that'd be really good yeah um so we've been talking about you know whenever we do a sour this is the one we want to do so when it came time we're like oh it's we're gonna do a sour here like oh it's we're doing a we're doing a pie sour we're not gonna start with you know something all very approachable and you know i think this is still like a like i said a crushable or a drinkable sour you know it's still full of flavor but we're like we want to kind of go for it with our first sour so we're like we're gonna We've been talking about this pie sour for a couple of years, yes. but let's actually execute it, and it's it's pretty much pretty much what we were going for. So hell yeah, you so, well you guys executed it. For so sure. so how do you figure out like when to add kind of everything in? I mean, obviously being a brewer, you kind of probably figure it out, but like especially if it's something you haven't done, like how do you? I mean, have you ever had batches where you make something and you're like, oh, well, this is awful, <laughs> and it just goes down the drain, and you're like, crap, that was a lot of stuff. So but, I mean, it kind of just. It really just depends um, the type of ingredient you're using. Um, you know, peppers are a really good example. We were talking about a little bit earlier um, off mic, but like the when you add a pepper, it can totally change a pepper beer. You know, if, it, if you add it during the boil, you're going to get more of the, you know, the aroma and the flavor of the pepper, but not the heat. But if you mm-hmm. add it in the fermenter and let it sit on those those seeds and that pepper, it's going to get spicy. And you know, so it's all about what are you going for in the beer. What are you trying to pull out? Um, and then how long do you want it to sit? Do you want, you know, coffee, for example, if you're, if you're having a beer sit on coffee for a day, it's going to be a little lighter. And if you want it to really have like that roastiness, you let it sit a little longer. Um, it just kind of depends. But Hmm. for this particular beer, we, I mean, we added the fruit, the vanilla and the cinnamon, uh, in the post fermentation in our fermenter. Uh, and then I added a little more cinnamon just because I wanted a little more cinnamon on the finish in the bright tank where we carbonate the beer. Uh, and now it's just kind of, I tasted it in the process. I felt like I needed a little more cinnamon, so I added it. Towards hell the yeah. End. But yeah, it just kind of depends. It's all different. And, and, yeah. and a part of it, uh, one of the things we do here, we call it our True North series. We do a single keg um, where we'll add an ingredient, um, whether it be fruit or coffee or whatever it might be, uh, to just one single keg. Uh, and that's our way to kind of, uh, you know, get kind of crazy, try something different. The test uh, group. Yeah. And if yeah. and if it's, hey, if we try it and it doesn't work out, we're dumping one keg instead of an entire batch. Yeah, um, sure. You know, right now we have our passion fruit, orange guava version of our hazy. That's just a fruited you got a version pog. of our hazy. We got a pog. You got a pog. That's we call awesome. it pog slam. We're throwing that like pogs. Oh, like, yes. Oh, dude. Yeah. The good old <laughs> slammers. Dude. That was oh, in the alleyways, man. man. Throwing the pogs. <laughs> those were the days. Throwing those slammers. And if you were born I- after 1995, you have no idea what the fuck we're talking about. That's well, fine. You missed out. Yeah, yeah, you 100% missed out. Yeah, they suck. Man. Let's bring that back. Can we have a pog night? Sometimes yeah. I look back and w- I don't really understand why we love pog so much, but I really did at the time. Yeah. It was the it was designs. Awesome. It was the brand. It was the design. <laughs> yeah. And when you flip those suckers, man, you're like, Nice. I feel like if you were shit. born between like 95 and 2000, that was the worst time to be born. Yeah. <laughs> because like <laughs> Jeez, you wait, missed what? out on a lot of fun stuff before the internet age, but then you're like too old to be part of like the modern internet age. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yep. they couldn't be TikTok superstars because they're like, you know, 
Yeah. They're a little too old to be, you know. I, I don't know. I, I, I think you just missed out on a little bit of a generation there. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. But dude, I'm feeling the sour. I love this. This is really good. This is this is nuts. Would you consider this a Christmas beer? <laughs> it's spicy. It's got cinnamon. It's, it's got cinnamon. It's got cinnamon. Does it have sediment? You know what? Or no. <laughs> this may not be a Thanksgiving beer. Or sorry. God damn it. I just gave away my ending. Oh, no, it I may know. not be a Christmas beer, but it's definitely a Thanksgiving beer. <laughs> Shit. That's fine. I'm drunk. I told you I'm drunk. I think it's that IPA, drunk. dude. We are we I'm are keto. talking about doing a fall sour, maybe with some cranberry or something. See, that okay. fits be... the end of the year. That'd, That'd be good. Like, that would be fantastic. A little cran. And we may be doing a pumpkin beer as well. I love it. It'll be coming out in November, you, October. Um, yeah, I think pumpkin it, beer is a very hit or miss, though. I don't know. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it can be way too sweet. Right, and a lot of times it's spicy. just the spice. Yeah, we appreciate you having <laughs> us. By the way, man. This yes, is, yeah, this no, has thank been you guys for coming out. This incredible. has been awesome. Yeah, yes. thank appreciate you so you guys much for making the trek down to the brewery. Hey, of course, and I think North Vegas is about to take off, man. And you guys are going to be we the flagship so. here. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers, guys. Cheers. No. No cheers, Derek? What? <laughs> I thought it was an air cheers. No. Oh, okay. We're close enough. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, Stu, this is this is so this is our first podcast back mm. in a minute. Indeed. And it was the best way to start it. I think it's our best podcast yet. On site. <laughs> yeah. We with, need to with do a great guests. We need to do more beer. on site. I think on site is the way to do it. Man. But Patrick, dude. Thank you so much for you oh, know, thank you guys. Letting, us, letting us come here, shoot this shit with you. This yeah. has been fun. Letting us try your beers. I mean, this, the coolest thing about this podcast is when you get to try the beers that the brewer made, and then you talk to the person who made the beers while you drink the beers. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I love it. Gotta love it, man. And thank you for doing it, man. It's been fantastic. Uh, I am well inebriated. I appreciate it. Um, you might just be me because I'm on keto. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to say it, you know. But here we are. Uh, cheers, man. Appreciate it. It's yeah, been great. You, it's been great. Thank you again. And Derek, as always, yep. we'll be seeing you, man. <laughs>